been estimated there are about 5 billion patients worldwide who don't have access to safe and affordable surgery and anaesthesia when they need it. People suffering from the most basic of conditions, appendicitis or a fracture, that becomes a life-threatening condition. Particularly we notice this in maternal health. About 300,000 women die in childbirth every year. And for many of these people it's due to a lack of access to safe surgery and anaesthesia. We come to learn that nine out of ten don't have access to the most basic of equipment and they don't have any access to ongoing education. The AAGBI and the WFSA have been working together um, and we've designed a short course in um, obstetric anaesthesia and another one in paediatric anaesthesia to update the knowledge and skills of anaesthesia practitioners in the, in the poorer parts of the world. We've worked with anaesthetists in countries such as Uganda. So rural hospitals in Uganda are a completely different entity to the bigger city hospitals. They are generally staffed by anaesthetic officers that just receive a two-year training program and um, have very little support, often work completely in isolation, have very little equipment, very little monitoring, um, and yet they do the vast majority of surgery. We went for training in Barara and it was a very nice organised training with competent trainers, very knowledgeable and skillful, and they were so friendly. Because the people are giving anaesthetics now are better trained, you see recovery rooms being started, you're sure there is pre-op checking, confirming that the patient is going to be safe for the anaesthetic, and on several occasions we have post-operative Checkups, so you sure that actually the patient in the perioperative period is basically attended by a physician who understands what he or she is doing. Every course that we run, we run a train the trainer course at the same time, so that the anesthesiologists who are on that course know how to deliver the course themselves. The, the course then becomes sustainable. And that's all. That's one of the greatest things to see that what we're doing does matter, and they do what we teach them. They do take that all on board and they do learn and read up on it and put it into practice to save lives. We've been really grateful to the support we've had from the Tropical Health Education Trust from UK Aid. It's been absolutely key in enabling us to pilot the courses in Uganda and now we're able to roll out the safe courses to other East African countries, in Zambia, Ethiopia, Malawi and also further afield. So we're running some courses in South America. We've taken the course to Bangladesh as well. We've run more than 20 courses. Um, we've trained hundreds of anaesthetists and our aim is to expand this course and to run it in many more countries and really to improve the outcomes for patients all over the world. It's just not right in this day and age that women should die or be disabled due to something so simple and so basic as childbirth. As a paediatric anaesthetist, I find it very troubling that children who have very simple conditions, things like a hernia or a cleft lip or palate, they don't have access to the simple surgery, to the transforming surgery that could make a difference to them for the rest of their lives. For me as an anaesthetist and somebody who's involved in training, I think that we have knowledge. The most important thing we can do is to share our knowledge, to help other people to deliver safe care to patients and that way we'll start to save patients' lives.